began my flight training like many pilots at the beginning. Uh, this is a Cessna 150 that I did my early flight training in. Uh, very grateful to my grandfather, Alan Kay, for giving me this opportunity. He was a great mentor and helped me start off on the right foot. You can see the cockpit of Alan Cessna 150, about as basic as you could get, but that's what you need to start. Advanced training, like anybody, highly recommend ATP flight schools for any airline training you may be considering. My first airliner was the Bombardier CRJ 700 um, 70 seat twin engine airliner. It was based out of Washington Dulles Airport and we were flying for United Express. We just started using the iPad for various tasks. This is for flight, great way to map out your route and look at weather before you take off. The CRJ700 had a very well organized cockpit with electronic uh, flat panel displays. All in all, a very well handling jet. Frequently it would be parked outside to offload and board passengers. This is a view of the ramp at Washington Dulles. You can see the tower in the background and a few of the regional jets parked here. Every now and then we'd get to ferry a uh, jet. This is a well snow covered jet. Uh, we'll have to board and get things started off and then we get the flight back to Dallas. As I mentioned, the jet was a lot of fun to fly. You can see the mounting for the iPad and back for me, the checklist, and a view of the um, instrument panels with the engine displays, landing gear handle, and the pilot's primary flight displays. Another view of that uh, setup. I was also very fortunate to give a ride to my son, Michael. He was in Washington for some business, and we had a chance to fly out to Kansas City for lunch. Next step along the way was Boeing 777 training. This is the Boeing 777 part test trainer, Miami. Uh, notes for a sim partner for practicing our check ride, which we had to complete before we had uh, went out to fly the line. The 777 is a wonderful aircraft. It's a big aircraft. Uh, it's just, you don't really understand how big it is to get up there and do a pre-flight. Uh, this is a view underneath by the nose gear. You can see the cargo door for the lower forward handle um, cargo open. The engines are huge, plenty of power. Of course, it has to be able to fly on one engine at full weight. The landing gear is always impressive. This is taken at the factory. The landing gear is so heavy, it doesn't use any hydraulics to come down. It simply falls of its own weight. Here is a 777 being refueled, and you can see some of the cargo pallets to the right getting ready to be loaded up. Another view of the underside of the aircraft from the front, and you can see the arrangement of the nose gear and the two engines. Here's a good view of the uh, six tire landing gear and the rear engine. In the small crew compartment of the aircraft, we are a cargo aircraft. There are four seats for deadheading pilots and extra crew members. The key to the whole operation of the 777F is that very large aft cargo door. You see how big it is? This is the cargo section. It's huge with uh, rollers that all automate the loading of the pallets. You take an empty airplane and loaded up with a weight and balance in as little as an hour. The load crews are very good. Again, you can see the size of that cargo door and some of the pallets getting ready to be loaded. Next, we have a view of the Hong Kong ramp at night. still use some paper maps for overwater flights. The idea is to avoid a gross, gross navigational error, be absolutely certain we know where we are for the very important field comp, um, computations. This is a view of me landing uh, right after arrival at Hong Kong. This is a view of the 777 throttle quadrant. You see the two throttles, uh, thrust reverse our handles below those, flaps to the right, and the pitch trim off to the left. Heading and altitude control panel for the autopilot. 
And then another view of the primary flight displays showing your heading, track, airspeed, altitude, uh, just a bunch of information all in one place. Again, the iPads provide a great source of uh, routing information. Just a lot of activity on the ramp as uh, you get to the aircraft, board it, start your pre-flight duties while the crew is doing their actions at back. Good view of the cockpit. Uh, before we taxi out, power is just about always on the airplane. The moment they land, crews get off, another crew is there to take it out. The APU is running uh, typically to keep this powered up and the jet just flies literally all the time. Good view from the ground, uh, getting ready to board the jet and just all the activity around the aircraft. Another good view of the front of the aircraft and you can see the cargo doors open as they are loading up the uh, cargo for that flight. A very clean uh, arrangement for the landing gear doors. There's a huge door that's shut on the ground that opens up to uh, retract the gear. And here's another pan shot of the aircraft at Hong Kong. Again, thank you for joining me on this little discussion and journey of um, flying two types of airliners and coming up next are some of the places that we visit on our trips around the world with the 777.